This is the brand spanking new iPad Pro. I got the iPad Pro 11 inch model here and the new Magic Keyboard that goes with it. And I got the new Apple Pencil Pro. Is this worth an upgrade? We are going to find out. And you'll be surprised. For some, it might be, but for many, it might not be. Let's dig in. All right, guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Ted, I'm a techie. And we talk about anything and everything tech in this channel. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and click that bell icon so you get notified. And today I got the iPad Pro, the new release from Apple. I've got the 11 inch iPad Pro and this one retails about $999 starts from $999 and the 13 inch model starts from $1299 the base version this is the brand new Apple Pencil Pro and this one costs about $129 and this is the magic keyboard that goes with the 11 inch iPad Pro and this one costs about $299 and if you're looking at the keyboard for the 13 inch model it costs about $345 with that said and before diving in we'll do a quick unboxing okay let me first unbox the iPad. Let's pull this out. I got the space gray version with me. That is how thin it is. Yeah, it's slightly thinner than the previous version. I wouldn't say it's much, but it's slightly thinner. Okay, we got some documentation here. I don't see a Apple sticker. Come on, Apple. You need to add those stickers back. All right. Usual iPad charging brick. And this time, instead of white, we have a black USB-C to USB-C charging kit. Let's do the Apple Pencil Pro and packaging is the same. Has some documentation and the Apple Pencil itself. All right. It's pretty much cylindrical, but one side of it is flat. And this is where you have the lettering Pencil Pro. So I think it helps in gripping, right? Okay, let me now unbox the Magic Keyboard. That is it guys, the magic keyboard for the 11 inch iPad Pro. I think we got some documentation inside. Yes, pretty much that. All right, so that is the case itself. And this is an aluminum body. And this is a space gray color just to go with the space gray iPad. It, it feels soft and the actual hinges and the body itself is aluminum and the top is also feels soft like a rubber material yeah the keyboard feeling is great and this is a glass surface touchpad just like any other uh, uh, MacBooks let me put up this iPad we got the Apple logo and we got our usual hello screen. Okay, and I'll set this up and do some testing and I'll come back and talk about how it performs, the pros and cons, why you should buy one or why you shouldn't buy one. Let's talk about that. Okay, let me try to put the iPad in the magic keyboard. Just open this app and we need to align these pin connectors with this. So, so yeah, 
that magnetically attaches into the back of the case and also goes 90 degree then it's got some angle going and the keyboard itself now once i hit the space bar it recognizes my face id and then it opens up the ipad now let me bring up uh, notes and try to do some typing yeah the key it's got some play there about one millimeter play and it's good it feels good and also the trackpad is typical of a um, macbook and this one just feels like you know the smaller version of the macbook air and to close it let's see close Yeah, I'm finding it difficult to open it because there's no, there's nothing to hold on to open this thing. So I'm glad to open it this way. Okay. All right. Opening it up is a little bit of a struggle, but you know, nothing to worry about there. And yeah, this looks fantastic. And it does add some bulk to the iPad itself. And I would say, this is pretty much MacBook Air, or even thicker than MacBook Air. And there is something interesting in the graphics in this box. There's some lettering, but I couldn't quite make out what those are, okay? You look at this graphics, okay? So for me, I'm thinking it is U-P-N-R-O-S. I don't know, if you know, Please comment below. And also, I could tell from the graphics they've put in the iPad box. So this image, basically, I think it conveys the dynamic range of OLED screens. You know, it's pretty much dark and you have bright colored naming called Pro. I think that's what it is. If you think about something else, please leave a comment below. Let's talk about what got added in this generation and what got deleted from the previous generation. Um, it's pretty much the same. Now we got our power button on the top right and we got our volume rocker up and down here and uh, the usb port in its usual location and we got a four speaker system two on the other side and two in here the ipad air has two stereo speakers but this one has got four two on each side which gives much better sound than the ipad air and if you look at closer to the camera we are losing one camera which is the ultra wide uh, camera there's only one camera in this generation both in the 11 inch model and the 13 inch model so there is no two camera system in this generation come on apple why do you do this speaking about the price now the 11 inch pro model starts from 999 dollars and the 13 inch model starts from 1299 dollars 300 dollars more than this so that's a 200 dollar bump on both these models from the previous generation the previous generation started at 799 and uh, 1099 it's a 200 dollar bump is the 200 dollar bump worth it let's find out looking at the front of this ipad you can see that the selfie camera which used to be here in this corner has moved over to the landscape position over here just like the base ipad apple has listened to the users and you know hey this is a welcoming change kudos apple and it also comes with the center stage ai technology and the pro models also has the true depth camera system um, it gives a lot more okay uh, on the background than the ipad air or any other ipads uh, so that's an advantage and also since the camera is in the center in the landscape mode whenever you're doing a zoom call or a video uh, conference call uh, you're looking straight at the screen and not to an, to an angle so that's a that's a very welcoming change with this model and the star of this ipad is basically the screen the display they're calling it the ultra retina xdr display this time instead of the liquid retina display 
from the previous version. And it's got the ProMotion technology and it's got a P3 wide gamut, color gamut, true tone technology and an anti-reflective coating on it. With this generation, there is also a nano texture display glass option that's only for the one terabyte storage version and the two terabyte storage version. Okay, you, get, you can get a nano texture display uh, that kind of, you know, reflects less light and uh, it'll be better in uh, you know, areas where, especially in the outdoors, uh, when you're using the tablet, you won't get much reflections out of sunlight or whatever, and the screen will be readable much more, but it comes with the cost. All right, let's talk about what, what's inside in terms of hardware. Now we know that uh, this one comes with an M4 chip in it. Apple could have named it M3, basically it's an M3, but you know, they, they monikered it M4, and the iPad is the first one to get an M4 chip in it, basically an M3 chip. Come on, Apple. What is changing in the M4 chip? Basically, the M2 chip, previous version, had eight core CPUs and 10 core GPUs, 16 core neural engine, and with this new version, we're getting nine core CPU, 10 core GPU, and the same 16 core neural engine. And there's also a version uh, when you opt for that one terabyte and the two terabyte option uh, it comes with 10 core cpu instead of the nine core cpu so it's much more better um, than the base model and in terms of storage now the base model we're getting 256 gb storage the previous model started with 128 uh, gb storage the, the storage has doubled in the base model which is which is nice to get that storage space and it goes up to two terabytes just like the previous version and speaking about the ram both 11 inch and 13 inch models comes with 8 gb ram and if you bump up to the one terabyte and two terabyte version you're getting 16 gb of ram that's, that's a lot of ram it's almost you know a desktop level of ram in those models so talking about the dimensions it's pretty much the same with both 11 inch and 13 inch models um, the the width and the height are pretty much the same. You're losing a couple of millimeters, that, but that's it. But the thickness, previously the 11 inch model was 5.9 millimeter thick, and this time it is 5.3 millimeter thick. And the 13 inch iPad even goes down to 5.1 millimeter. So in terms of weight, this is losing about somewhere about 20 grams. So previously it used to be 466 grams and now it's about 444 grams. And it'll be a little heavier when you opt for the cellular version because you know those circuitry gets added into it. And um, the resolution of the screen is pretty much the same. Previously it used to be 2388 by 1668. Now it is 2420 by 1668. Uh, we've gained some pixels on the length wise, but uh, they're maintaining the same pixel per inch, you know, which is 264 pixel per inch for the 11 inch model. And I guess it's the same for the 13 inch model too. In talking about the brightness, that's where, you know, the OLED screen is super bright than any other screens on the iPad yet. The previous model uh, had a max brightness of 600 nits, and this one has about 1000 nits. And it goes up to 1600 nits, peak brightness in HDR content only. One hardware addition in terms of media engine is uh, this generation, suppose AV1 decode. So we have hardware decode for, you know, the streaming videos services uh, format. AV1 is a new format for Netflix or YouTube. You know, those get decoded in the hardware. So you can save battery life with that. Now the battery life on this, uh, they're claiming the same amount of battery life, which is 10 hours of surfing the web on the Wi-Fi or watching video or up to nine hours surfing the web or watching video using the cellular data if you got the cellular version of it. Okay, let's talk about the changes with the Apple Pencil Pro. Now, this one has got a squeeze function now. Basically, you can squeeze this and uh, there's something called battle roll, you know, something like this, and a haptic feedback. Uh, this has got now haptic feedback and also this version of the pencil is getting find my support so you if you lose this pencil you can find it out with uh, your find my service with other apple devices and try to locate this which is cool okay let me show you how the squeeze function works now in the settings for pencil they go in there you see the item here for squeeze function okay when you get to those options you can set all of these for the squeeze function. Basically, if you are doing a drawing program, you can bring up you know, color palettes and things like that. And also you could do a shortcut to bring up an app. So let me set up to shortcut. And then let's say I choose clock. 
and you can choose an app and also what function to do on the app. So, you know, uh, and I choose clock and then set a timer, okay? So I've now set that up. And whenever I do a uh, squeeze, it gives me a haptic feedback, a really good feedback saying I, I really squeezed it. So I can feel that click uh, in my finger, click. And then there comes the timer to set up your timer. So this squeeze function is brilliant. And as usual, you know, the pen goes into the side for both charging as well as pairing. So it stays there. Okay, the star of the show on this iPad is the screen, the OLED screen. Oh my God, the screen is amazing. Now this one has got um, 2 million to 1 contrast ratio and the screen is just amazing. My jaw dropped watching this screen. Uh, just for comparison, I've got two more iPads here. Um, the base model, 10th generation iPad and a 9th generation iPad. So I got all three iPads. This is the 9th generation iPad, the base iPad. This is the 10th generation base iPad. And this is the new iPad Pro. And immediately I can say that this screen is brighter and uh, the contrast ratio is amazing, amazing. <laughs> There's no word to explain this. You need to, you need to see the screen in person to, oh man, this is, this is great. The iPad 9 screen is a bit washed out, I would say. Um, it's a good step. The, both the base iPads do, do have all the colors, but you know, sometimes uh, the contrast ratio is missing. That's where the OLEDs uh, shine. And this screen is just amazing. And the other things to talk about is that uh, we get the Face ID only with the Pro models, and none of the other iPads uh, support the Face ID. And we got Touch ID in uh, iPad Air but only the pros has the face ID. And talking about the cellular and the Wi-Fi hardware, it's basically the same, pretty much the same. We got the Wi-Fi 6E, and, and I wish Apple could have moved to Wi-Fi 7, which got released a long time back, but no changes in that area. It's Wi-Fi 6E and uh, Bluetooth 5.3. It's the same from the previous generation. And one other change uh, with the cellular version is that uh, we used to have a uh, the SIM slot, but that's gone now. Uh, it's only eSIM with any of the iPads now. And as with the Pros, uh, the USB-C connector here, this is also a Thunderbolt port, so you get 40 Gbps uh, of bandwidth with this. So when you connect a, uh, you know, like a fast drive, like an NVMe drive, you can get all those speed uh, with this connector. None of the other iPads have that kind of uh, a bandwidth. All right, so that's pretty much we get in terms of updates with this generation. And let me go ahead and, and do some benchmark testing and come back and look at those numbers. Be right back. Okay, I'm back with the scores, guys. I ran Geekbench, both CPU, GPU, and Apple is selling these devices big on AI and machine learning. So I also ran the Geekbench Core ML benchmarks. That's for machine learning performance. Okay, let's take a look at the scores. The single core scores are now 3,724 versus the previous generation, which is 25. Three, four, which is an amazing 47% performance boost on this iPad, which is just amazing. On the multi-core score, I got 13,371 versus 9,622 for the previous version, which is a whopping 39% performance improvement. And talking about the GPU performance, this time I got uh, 53,888 versus the previous generation, 45,135, which is a 19% improvement in the GPU performance. It's not bad at all. And talking about the Core ML benchmarks, now we could run Core ML benchmarks on the CPU, GPU, as well as the neural engine, you know? So uh, on the CPU, the new score is 4,731 versus the older score, 3,447, which is 37% improvement, which kind of aligns with the multi-core performance, you know? Almost uh, the multi-core performance was 39% improvement. In the ML workload, it is 37%, which is, you know, amazing. And uh, talking about the GPU, using the GPU for ML, uh, I got a score about 6,839 
versus 5,472, which is about 20% uh, performance improvement, which kind of aligns with the GPU performance as well. And uh, doing this on the neural engine, uh, I got a score of 9,463 versus the old 7,335, which is about 29% improvement on the using the new neural engine for ML workloads, which is amazing. Okay, now let's talk about who this iPad is for and why you should buy this Pro model. Unquestionably, the screen, the OLED screen is amazing. So that's one reason uh, to buy this iPad. The screen is gorgeous. If you want an OLED screen, then this is what you need to have. What are the other things? Faster CPU, GPU, and neural engine. Yeah, we saw the scores. Amazing performance improvement in those areas. And also the selfie camera is in the landscape oriented mode, which everyone likes. And also this version is also capable of uh, doing a 4K airplay to the Apple TV. So that might be useful for some people want to stream 4K directly from their iPad to an Apple TV. That's capable now. What are the cons and who should not buy this iPad at all? Yeah, there are a few things. The first thing is there's only one camera now. There used to be two camera, ultra wide camera is dropped from this model. If you if you want that ultra wide camera and you're used to you know zooming in without losing any image quality, then you won't get this with these generation models. It is better to go to the previous generation model. Okay, the other thing you might not want to buy this is, this is a OLED screen and it is prone to screen burning. The OLED technology has gone a long way, but you know, the screen burning issue is still there. It depends on what content you're watching. If you are using this iPad for gaming and you got static content everywhere and you know, and you play, games uh, hours and hours the screen burning is going to be an issue in fact i've been using an oled lg 4k 48 inch tv as my monitor for the past two years two and a half years it works really great and i've been using it like more than eight hours every day it has not given a problem in the past two years so it might cause a problem in the future but yeah i went into it knowing that hey OLED, there is a risk of screen burning with OLEDs. Burn-in is an issue with OLEDs and that's why Apple has been hesitating to add OLED screens to their laptops. Mm. We might get OLEDs on the MacBooks too. We need to wait and see. Another thing why you might need to avoid this is this is 200 bucks expensive now. Okay, and uh, if you're choosing the 13 inch version, the base model with 256 storage starts from $1,300, which is going into the laptop macbook territory you could very well buy a macbook air for that price macbook air comes with 13 inch screen version as well as 15 inch screen version and it has a better battery performance 16 hours of battery performance instead of 10 hours also when you start adding the smart keyboard this is going to get bulkier than the macbook air so macbook air would be a better option for some who doesn't need the touch functionality and if you want the touch functionality you are an artist you are a uh, drawing artist absolutely you know this is the best uh, ipad you can get and you can't do that with uh, uh, with a uh, macbook but for most people in that money you know it is going into that macbook territory and for most of the people macbook would be a better option and choice and also in terms of application they can run there are much more options with a macbook rather than an ipad and even the hardware is Terrific on these iPads. It's getting better and better and better in terms of hardware. The iPad OS is is kind of letting it down. There are no apps in the iPad ecosystem to take advantage of the hardware performance in here. That might be coming soon in the AI era, but we are far away from that. But right now, the hardware is an overkill for the apps. And the very important reason not to buy this, there is no Apple sticker included in the box. <laughs> yeah, there's no Apple sticker. I'm just kidding. If you are interested in purchasing any accessories for either the 11 inch or the 13 inch iPad Pro or the iPad Airs, I've curated a list of quality accessories and gears like cases, screen protectors and things like that. All of them are in the description below and some of them are affiliate links for your information. And that is it guys. That's my review of the new M4 iPad Pro. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and click that bell icon so you get notified whenever a new video drops. And also please leave a comment below.
Tell us if you would purchase this iPad or what are the reason you would skip this. Thank you guys. Thank you very much for joining.